1916 obviously sees the Somme, obviously sees as well the Easter Rising, so both Nationalist Ireland and Unionist Ireland have their war myth, I suppose, for, ah, for yes. the future. Yes, yes. Well, the war provides the opportunity, England's opportunity, you know, England's extremity is Ireland's opportunity um, for nationalists to make a stand, for separatist Republicans. And when Redmond offers the volunteers to fight everywhere, a, a tiny minority break away, uh, less than 10,000 of what, 180,000. Now this begins to grow, and it begins to grow as the war seems to be lasting indefinitely. It's not over by Christmas. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, the conditional loyalty uh, of 1914 becomes strained in some nationalist families for this. And they begin to think, well, there's something we can, we can make of this. And of course, led by Pierce particularly, and of course Connolly and the, uh, the Citizen Army, but they begin to think that this is a real opportunity to strike. Um, and, and then they launch the Easter Island. It provides the, the, the opportunity, it provides the method. War is you know, politics by other means, so they'll take politics by other means. And it provides the moment um, uh, uh, to strike. Uh, no, it's, it, as we know, it's militarily a great fa failure. Politically, it's very different. And it turns into a, a, a seminal moment in the, uh, as it were, the creation story of independent Ireland. That is, of course, balanced by a similar creation myth, if you want, which emerges from the psalm. Uh, and if the Easter Rising is, as some maintain, a kind of blood sacrifice for uh, the Irish Republic, the psalm is an equivalent blood sacrifice for the Union.